Hi guys, Mike Lambeau here. Something a bit different today. I thought I'd show off um, my next game book, which should be out fairly soon. Just finalising a few things with it, hopefully in the next week or so. Um, this is preliminarily uh, entitled Beaches of the Brave, or Beaches for the Brave, probably, more likely. Still deciding the exact wording. Um, and this is going to be a game book which will include 12 beach landings from World War II, including uh, all those favourites such as Utah, Omaha, Gold Sword, Juno, uh, Point to Hawk, Tarawa, uh, Iowa Jima, um, Probably one or two others that I can't quite think of at the moment. Uh, one of the uh, smaller islands around uh, Guadalcanal as well. So there's a good few in there, 12, 12 in total. Although there's a couple that are different stretches of the same uh, beach, if you like. So slightly different game for me, as you can probably see already from the sample page there. Um, this is one of the Utah beach um, beaches. And... There are two of those in the book. Is the first one I think in the book. There, so um, they don't differ hugely in difficulty, to be honest, and they don't necessarily go from easy to hard either. You have to sort of work out which ones are more difficult than others, and you know adjust tactics accordingly, and so on. Um, it'll become fairly obvious fairly quickly which are the more difficult ones, and once you've played a few, you'll start to realise that some are more difficult. Um, so, for example, as ever. Uh, Tarawa is particularly challenging. A couple of beaches on that one um, because there's long stretches of water to wade through before you can get to the, the sort of beach where you might find at least some cover. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, so you can see slightly different direction for me, just moving away for now from, from hexes and, and those kinds of things, uh, grids and things. So this time we've got six tracks. So the numbered one to six at the bottom here. I'm not sure how clearly that is on the camera, but uh, the numbered one to six, and you have these tracks going up the beach. So we've got this is black and white. Obviously, the book itself, the game itself, will be colour, full colour, uh, as ever. You know, nice vibrant colours on on these things. So you'll see clearly when you're playing it in the book itself that this bottom dark area is the sea, which is blue, and then the rest of it on this beach is sand. Some go up into um, sort of greener areas and coral and all sorts of other things but this one uh, is the basic sea and sand so you, you're out the sea fairly quickly here to reflect the fact that on this uh, on Utah resistance was relatively light compared to some of the other beaches in Normandy um, and casualties uh, similarly relatively light that's not to say people didn't lose their lives obviously they did um, but that's why I've put this one in first as being perhaps one of the less challenging beaches. So you've got these six tracks. You start then, so setup is possibly the quickest it could ever be. Um, if you're doing it with, pe with sort of pencil and eraser, you don't really need to do anything other than just put a, maybe a little mark at the bottom just to show you all in the bottom runs. I'm just, for, uh, as usual, I like to use these little wooden cubes. I just put my guys on there. And there you go. Each one sort of represents uh, maybe one, two, three, four, a small group of guys. You know, the idea here is that this is a small stretch of the beach and by no means meant to be the whole of Utah Beach. And there's a, maybe a boat or two has landed, a landing craft or two has you know, hit the shore or, or got fairly near the shore. The guys have jumped out and away they go. So the idea is that you come up these tracks. Each guy must stick to each unit, as we're going to call them, must stick to their particular track. And the, the, the objective is to destroy all six positions in this enemy bunker here. Uh, some of the maps, some of the beaches have more than one bunker. This one's just got the one, but it has got six positions in it. So we've got to destroy those six positions to win. And we've got to do that before we lose all our units. Okay. Playing time of this one is really quick. This is a sort of 10 minute, a ga 10 minute game. Um, certainly there's replayability here. You'll see how um, you know all sorts of things can happen. You have all kinds of decisions to make, but that does depend on the roll of the dice. So it will be different every time you play through. Plus, there are twelve beaches, twelve different beaches. As I say, they're not you know just sort of repeats of this one twelve times. There are twelve different beaches or different sections of beaches. 
uh, you know, there's something like eight or nine different beaches and a couple of them have two sections. That's all. It's, it's large. You know, and even those sections are different. So there are 12 different games to have a go at or different scenarios. Um, and they do differ. They, they differ in, you know, you know, on some, for example, the, uh, the, the there's an enemy uh, tank on one of them at Tarawa, I think. Also, sometimes we have... Uh, U.S. artillery that, that managed to get onto the, you know, Sher one of those floating Sherman, amphibious Shermans managed to land on the beach. So you might have one of those to help you out and so on. There's aerial bombardment, naval bombardment, grenades, shooting, all sorts of things. And, and these things do differ a little from map to map, from beach to beach. So you need to check the instructions carefully. As ever, uh, the page next to each beach will have all the information on. Uh, here's the one for Utah. I don't really want to show that off yet. Obviously, the book's not published yet, so um, I've just got it to my side, to the side over here, just to refer to. But you know, everything you need is, will be on that facing page when you open the book um, at the particular beach you want to play. Um, the rules only run to less than nor less than my other books that I've brought out. So um, yeah, I don't know six pages or something of actual rules including diagrams and stuff so yeah fairly simple so again it's aimed at people on the go people want to just you know have a go at it they, uh, might be interesting a bit of history on this one this is a game that i've had in production for quite some time actually and it's kind of sat next to me in various guises over certainly months if not possibly more, longer than that and I kind of wondered whether I should publish it or not and you know kept titivating it and, and changing things and so on and I think one day I just realized that I kept returning to play it you know when I was designing other games or doing other work that I do if I sort of stopped for a coffee or something often I'd turn to this game and play it um, because it literally takes five to ten minutes to play each each run through um, and yet it gives you just a you know Something to take your mind off things, just gives you a break, uh, and gives you that sort of taste of war games. So great, you know, great for people on the move, people haven't got much time. It's yeah, you know, it serves a purpose. This is not you know this is not D Day at Tarawa, which um, you know, by the way I love to pieces. You know, this is this is not that. One of my favourite games to play solitaire. Uh, this is, you know. Beaches for the Brave. This is a book game. This is, um, you know, cheap-ish, reasonable, I would like to say, uh, for a game. And it will give you a good few hours enjoyment for, you know, for the price. And, uh, you know, say hopefully plenty of replayability too. Anyway, let's crack on, shall we? So the, what we're going to do here then is say we're trying to destroy these six positions at the top. Now, needless to say, the more enemy positions there are, the more they will fire back at me. So I've got to be careful. I've got to be try and get those destroyed fairly quickly on these tracks you can see various spaces there are some spaces which are circled quite thickly they are cover spaces again they're different colors to, to, to denote different types of cover although they all have the same effect which is you can't be shot at if you're on one of those spaces so for example you know, there's one behind some I know, some grass or vegetation on the beach here there's one behind a sort of brown beach obstacle one behind a rock here, although that's an arrow, we'll come to those in a minute. Uh, more behind some more vegetation up there. So each, each track has, you know, a handful of cover spaces as you go up. Also, you can see there are arrows. These are, if your guys are on these arrows, then they can shoot at the bunker. And again, remember, these are units, little groups of guys. So they might have, I don't know, mortars and machine guns and that sort of thing. So just trying to take out these positions that they go on the beach. Uh, there are spaces with explosion on these are mines so you must you can't leave you guys on those if you land on them and stay there you have you know your guy will be removed automatically usually avoidable becomes more difficult as you run out of um, units and therefore options as you will see uh, once you're on the g spaces at the top these are grenade spaces you can attempt to throw grenades into the bunker which is one of the most effective ways of getting rid of them the enemy positions um, assuming you can actually get your units that far up the beach Okay, so hopefully we should be okay with this one. Hopefully we'll be successful. It's going to say it is the first one, but it does rather depend on a few things. Now, for this beach, you do get air support, but, but it's a one-off event at the beginning of the game. So first thing I do is, it says over on the instructions here, is to once only at the start of the game, <clears throat> before I do my first um, phase of actions, then I can roll four dice 
and for each matching pair <clears throat> I can destroy one section of the bunker so let's go and yeah there we go so there's no pairs there you know, no pairs so obviously you know goes without saying doesn't it? that would destroy one section of the bunker that would only destroy one section of the bunker because there's only one pair there uh, whereas obviously that would be two uh, as would um, that be two yeah so statistically um, you almost always roll one pair you know that's <laughs> just I didn't but for example there you know there's double one as well so statistically I've not worked it out but in most games you will roll one pair and that's how the game is designed to be that you start off by destroying one enemy bunker position there I didn't so I'm not going to do that what you can view that as, I know, I know that's entirely luck based, but what you can view that as is really sort of setting a difficulty level for you, if you like. So if you, you know, if you don't destroy one like I didn't, then I know I'm in for a tougher ride at this game. Most of the time I'll destroy one, so it'll be a, an ordinary game. And, you know, sometimes if I'm lucky, I've never done it actually, um, I don't think, in playtesting. But if I got two doubles, then I would destroy two sections and think, you know, well, I should be able to do this fairly easily now. But it doesn't always play out like that, but that's uh, the way it works. I've not got you know the air support missed didn't hit my particular bunker hopefully cleared a load of other bunkers down the beach but not mine uh, so here we go i'm i've entered the first allied forces phase as it's called which means i get to move and do other things with my guys so i've got six um starting units so i take six d6 and give them a roll okay now what i do next is just have a look at what I've got. Okay, now I know you, you can't see the rules. So I'm just going to explain. There aren't loads. You know, it's not like this copious amount of options, but there are sort of um, good one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. On this one, there are seven, I think, options that you can do with various combinations and things of dice. Um, other beaches may have one or two more. So there's, there's, there are things you can do to mitigate dice rolls. This is about it's a dice placement game, I guess, is it? Or dice allocation? Is that is that a that's a mechanic, isn't it? In, in gaming, I think. Um, so what I can do here, what stands out to me straight away is that I've got a double six. Okay, so for a pair of sixes, you can um, lay down suppressing fire on the bunker. So if I do that, the bunker won't fire this at the end of this turn, the end of this phase, in the enemy phase. Uh, it won't fire back, but you do need a pair of sixes to do that. So quite fortunate to get that. So I've got that, I can do that. Something else I could have done with these, because I've got a run of three continuous dice, so four, five, six, but that could have been two, three, four, or one, two, three, whatever. That means there's an officer present uh, to give you know orders and things to, to, to direct the troops. So what that allows me to do is re-roll those three dice if I want to. So for example, if I'd only got one six, and a, and a sort of three, four, five, then I, I might decide to roll the three, four, re-roll the three, four, five, and hope of getting another six to suppress. I don't need to do that because I've got that suppression fire, so I, I'm going to put those up there, so I'm just conscious to get them on the camera, just to remind me that I've suppressed those. Now, one of the key rules with this game is you have to use all the dice, and you can only use one die per unit uh, that you've got, well, sorry, you, you roll one die per unit, you you must use all the die, but you can only use one die maximum per unit that you have here. Okay, so for example, I couldn't move and shoot in the same turn by allocating different dice to uh, these units down here. Okay, so the way, because there's not much else I can do with this, I don't think, let me just check the uh, various bits and pieces. No, that's about it. Um, so I don't want to re-roll, don't want to use the Allied Officer present um, option. What I have to do with the dice that are remaining that I haven't used, I've used those two sixes, they're gone. Remember, you can only use the dice once. Okay? Each dice can only be used once, but, but every dice must be used once. So they've been used there. So it means I've only got four left. So that means I can only allocate these to four of my guys. And, and the dice that are left that you can't do anything else with you have to use for movement. So what I've got to do now is allocate these to four particular guys, and then at the when I've done that, they will then all move the amount shown on those dice. Okay, now clearly, I don't want to put a two on this guy because he would go one, two, and finish on that mine and be destroyed. So obviously I'm not going to do that. I could put the two there because he will move into this cover space behind the obstacle. Similarly, he doesn't want a five because I'll take him to this mine. 
Uh, the four is pretty good for him, so he takes him to a cover space. One, two, three, four, five. That's excellent for him because that takes him to this arrow space, which is not only a cover space, but also a fire space where you potentially can shoot from, remember? So I want to try and get my guys onto those wherever possible. So, so far I've got three into cover. Now, remember, getting into cover this time isn't particularly urgent because the bunker is not going to shoot at the end of this particular round because we've suppressed it, luckily. But you can see that if I hadn't got that suppression fire, I'd already be starting to you know, think, oh, you know, how many guys can I get into cover? Well, what's the best allocation of dice to get as many as possible into cover? Because when they do shoot, they're going to shoot with six dice. And every track that's rolled, one to six, is going to kill the unit on that track if it's not in cover. So you can see that sometimes that enemy fire can be absolutely devastating, particularly on later beaches where you've got to wade through water without cover and things. But we'll leave that for you to discover. Uh, so I'm going to put this five here, I think. One, two, three, four. Yeah, so that all works quite well. So now I move my pieces up. One, two, three, four, five. He's onto there. One, two, he's onto cover. Uh, sorry, he didn't have a dice, he doesn't move. One, two, three, four. Sorry, one, two, three, four. He's onto cover. And one, two, three, four, five. He's onto this nice cover fire space. So they've done. These two dice uh, are doing the suppressing of the bunker, so they don't do anything else. Now it would usually be the enemy phase, but they don't roll because um, I've suppressed them. Okay, so now it's my go again. I've still got all six units, so again, I get to roll six dice. Okay, now lower numbers tend to be a little worse because often there's gaps between the cover spaces. So getting your guys from one to another can be problematic um, if you're not too careful. I don't know why I've just put those dice there. It's best to leave them in here, isn't it? Uh, so what can I do here? I, well, I've got a, I, I could get rid of some of the low dice by doing an officer present action and re-rolling those. But let's just see what I can actually do. The fire space over here, this arrow, remember I said this was a good arrow to me. It's a good arrow because it's cover space, but also it's a fire space. Now to fire, you need to allocate a six to this guy because we haven't got a six, have we? So he can't fire. So what I'm going to do is just move those out of the way for a second and re-roll these and I hope that I get a six. Okay, still no six. And unfortunately now, even putting all these together, I've got no officer present anymore. So I can't, there's no run of three dice, so I can't re-roll again. So you can do that. You can roll as many times as you keep getting a run of three. But as you can see, you don't get them as often as you might think, surprisingly. So now I'm struggling a little bit. These double fours would allow me, uh, on this beach it's double three or double four, would allow me to bring in a reinforcement at the bottom of an empty track. But you can't have more than one unit on a track at a time, so I can't use that at the moment. So what I've got to do now then is allocate all of these dice to movement. And that's a shame because they've all got to move, which is bound to leave some out of cover, unless I'm really lucky. And it's also moving this guy off of this important space here, which again is a shame. But let's see how we go on. So I could give him a two, and that takes him to that cover. Or I could give him a five, which takes him to the cover up there. So let's just see what you get to with that. One, two, three, four. So that can get him to cover that four, which is useful. He needs a four. I could give him a two and put him onto this fire space, but that's a risk because he's got to survive an enemy attack before he then gets the chance to fire next turn. So whilst they probably should be used, they're not as good as these ones that are in cover. So I've got to just think about that. I might, I might prefer to get him to save cover at this stage. This chap is a bit of a problem. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, he's only, he needs a three and we haven't got a three. So he's going to be out of cover, whatever happens. So I might just put the one on him. Um, he could have a five. One, two, three, four, five's okay for him. Oh dear, but the five's no good for him or a two. So I don't know what he's going to do if anyone else could survive with anything else. Not really. Okay, it's uh, it's an all right roll, but it's not brilliant. So he gets a two, he gets a four, uh, he gets a four. So they're both in cover. They're all in cover at the moment, so that's good. But then he's not. One, two, three, four, five. He's not. One, two, three, four, five. He is. So I've got four of them into cover. But you can see now I'm vulnerable. Oh, tracks four and five. I'm vulnerable at tracks four and five. So that's... 
not great, particularly because there are still six positions left in the bunker. So now we're going to roll for the enemy. So this is the first enemy attack phase we've had. I'm looking to not get any fours and fives, which is probably quite unlikely. I've got both. So it doesn't matter that you get two. All you're looking for is which tracks get hit. So here they have hit tracks two, three, four, five, six, <clears throat> which is pretty bad roll, but you, what do you expect if you're rolling six dice? You're always going to get a few. Fortunately, I've got most of my guys in cover, so they're all generally survive that, except the ones on four and five who are removed as casualties. Okay, so this is now turned into a bit of a slog to be honest. It's going to be tricky, but let's see how it goes. Back to me. I've only got four guys now, so it's four dice. Remember for this. Oh, okay. That's quite useful. Now the sixes are no good because, sorry, the six is no good to fire, I should say, because I have no guys on those arrow lines. So that's a shame. But by using them to suppress the enemy again, it means that I can move more safely. And what I'm going to do here, I think, is move this guy, one, two, three, four, up into a fire space, which is also a cover space behind this bit of seawall here. So he's okay. Uh, the two is less good. But fortunately, I can't move him up because he'll be on a mine. Um, <clears throat> probably just push him up to there. He's not in cover, but I've suppressed the enemy, so that's okay. Remember, he, because he moved onto this fire space, I can't then use the six to fire this turn. But I'm using the sixes anyway to suppress the enemy. So they won't fire, so it's back to me again. Now, I really need to start get, getting some of this bunker moved. You can see how you know, leaving them at full strength is just going to destroy me eventually. So... I need a six, really. Let's see what's going on. I've got four units, four dice. Okay, I've got that six that I wanted. There's also other th interesting things happening here. In fact, this is a really good roll for me at the moment. I allocate that six to this guy, or this unit. They will fire. Okay, they won't move, they just fire. So good thing is it takes a chunk of the bunker out, but also he stays in that cover space. Right, now this two is a perfect roll for me because he can go into that cover space there, although a four or a six would have done the same. So he was actually in a good starting position. So he'll have that two, and he'll have that six, which will take that bunker out. Okay, so I just take, either cross it out with a pencil or um, put a marker on it. That's left me with this double three. And I remember I said earlier, double three is good for reinforcements. What I'm gonna do, I mean, I could use it to move guys up, I could move him up to cover, and but it'll put him out of cover. So I could advance, because I really wanna try and get to these grenade spaces, of course, but I'm gonna use that to bring in a reinforcement. And remember, I can put that reinforcement on I on any empty track. In this case, it'll be track four or tracks four or five. Sometimes there is quite a difference between them, so you just have to look a little bit carefully. Well, they've both got two fire spaces, one's covered and one's not. This, they've both got three grenade zones, but one's got a grenade in cover, which is always helpful to be in. Um, so I'm going to go on track four. Okay. The downside of reinforcements, of course, is they're always going to start not in cover, because the bottom of these beaches are never in cover. So he is now vulnerable to enemy fire for the turn, but it's it's worth a risk. Getting a guy back is really important, a unit back, it, if he survives it, if nothing else, it gives me an extra dice for, a, for a, a, you know, a round or two, which is really useful. Enemy fire then with five dice now, and this time they've hit rows two, three, five, and six. Okay, remember you don't, it doesn't matter there's two or threes, it's just the row, so two, three, five, and six, so they've hit two, he's in cover, three, he's in cover, Five, there is nobody there, and six, he's in cover. So fortunately, I put the guy on the right track. He survives. You know, he's the late comer, you know, another boat's arrived or whatever. Guy's out. So far, so good. Back to me. I've got five dice this time again. So things looking slightly better again. Really could do with another six to keep this guy firing now constantly in that bunker. Okay, we've got that, and now we've got a decision to make, as you can probably already guess. All right, there's a couple of things to think about here. We've got potential to put another reinforcement on, so we could add a guy at, at lane five. We've got the ability to suppress the enemy so they won't fire, but I really want to use one of these sixes to uh, to shoot from this position here and remove a section of the bunker. So there's a bit of a conundrum there. I think what I'm going to do is just see what else I can do with these dice to see how useful they are and whether it leaves me one six or whether I, you know, if everyone's not going to be in cover, then probably I need to suppress the enemy. But if I can get people mainly to cover, 
then that's not going to be too bad. So for now, we'll go with shooting him. Let's see what this new guy needs. One, two, three. So he could use a three, four, five. So yeah, he needs a three. So he goes there. Uh, he can use a three, which is useful. One, two, three. It's a shame no one else is on a fire space, really. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, he can use the six and he can use a two. Perfect. Okay, so just, you know, sometimes just a bit of jiggling, a bit of thought can get you a really good outcome. Um, but you can see there are, you know, there are options. I, you know, I could have suppressed fire and brought in a reinforcement. Wouldn't have been a bad move because, of course, with them suppressed, the reinforcement gives me six dice and he's, he's going to survive that first attack isn't he because there isn't going to be an attack so then he gets a chance to get to cover so swings and roundabouts probably would have done that had i taken more of the bunker out already but i'm really keen to get this bunker down so using that six there i can take out a chunk of the bunker so he will move three into cover he will move six one two three four five six into cover he will move two into cover and he will move three into cover what a great what a great roll, you know, five in cover, taking a chunk of the bunker out. They're down to four. They, no point in rolling for them. I'm not suppressed them, but there's just no point in rolling because all my guys are in cover. They can't do any harm, which, you know, whatever they roll. So I can go straight back to my turn again. So roll the five dice again. Ooh, looking a bit on the lowish side, and I've got no officer um, present here there's no continuous run on some beaches where you've got tank support double two will give you that support and you're able to take out a chunk of the bunker with that but i can't do that here uh so this has not been great haven't got a fire haven't got a six so i can't use this guy again um now i want to start thinking a little bit about what's you know what the best moves are here um because as they pre approach the top if they run off the top of the track they can start, they, they come back to the beginning and start again on any empty track. But, but as you've seen, they're, they're vulnerable if they do that. So I'd, I want to try and slow down at the top here. I can see straight away that's a good move to give him a one because he gets into this grenade space. Now a grenade space works the same as a fire space, but you hit on a five or six. So it's like they're actually you know, better, um, you know, much better chance of getting some damage. Probably give him a one as well because he'll then go into cover unless we need it elsewhere. Let's keep looking. There's a four for him. One, two, three, four, which takes him into that zone. Two takes him in, sorry, into the fire uh, space. That two takes him into a fire cover space. So that's good. And that's not bad to give him a two either. It takes him into a fire space, not a cover space, but it does take him into a fire space. So I think I'm happy with that allocation there. Um, so let's move him up to there and uh, him up four. One, two, three, four. He's into, a, into that space. He goes into the grenade space. He goes into that fire space and he goes into that fire space. So a pretty attacking setup there. I've got three people in fire, three units in fire spaces and one in a grenade space. So, you know, could potentially do some damage with a good roll. Unfortunately, the uh, enemy now fire first and the only vulnerable track I've got is this track one. Yeah, everyone else is in cover, so it's just him. So I don't want to see a one. There's four dice, there's a good chance of it. It's there. So they've taken him out, unfortunately. He's been gunned down. But back to me, I've got four dice, and I need to see some sixes and a five. Five is okay now for the grenade, of course. So fives and sixes, please. Well, it's okay. I really wanted one five, didn't I? Uh, oh, and there's something else to think about here as well now, which I've not seen yet. So I can put the five on the grenade guy. He won't move then. He'll just chuck a grenade in the bunker and destroy one of the bunkers uh, sections. That would leave me two fives and a one. Now, they're not hugely helpful here um, because, OK, the one's all right for him. It'll put him on a grenade space, not in cover, but you don't get many grenade spaces in cover, to be honest. You know, by then, you're a bit close to the bunker, really. Uh, one, two, three, four, five is no good for him, really. And a one, two, three, four, five gets him on a grenade space. So I could shift them all up to grenade spaces, but there's going to be a couple in the open and so on and so forth. What? I think might be the better option here is to use these three fives because I can do that. So any triple uh, can be used for naval, allied naval fire support. So I think I'm going to do that. Okay, that means, you know, all the battleships and so on out at sea are firing in and that takes out a section of the bunker for me. Okay. And it does mean I've only got this one to allocate. 
I think probably because these two are on fire spaces, he's on a grenade space. I'm going to just push him up one onto that grenade space with that one. And that's that done. So the naval support is good in a way. Obviously good that it removes a bunker, but it also allows me to leave three other units where they are. Now that's fine if they're in cover, of course, but if you roll naval support early on where you've got units not so much in cover, you have a bit of a conundrum then as to whether you want to use that early bonus to take out a section of the uh, bunker or whether you need to use it to get your guys into cover, and that'll depend really on how many you can get to cover and so on. It's a balancing act. We've taken that out. The enemy will then fire. They're down to three dice, and the only vulnerable space is track six. Let's see what they do now. They miss. They miss two, three, five, which is good. So back to me. I've got four dice again. Again, remember, I'm looking for fives and sixes particularly here. Wow, there we go. So with one really good roll, you can see there what I'm going to do or what I can do. I can, I can put the sixes on any four of these because they're all on grenades and fires, fire spaces. Stick those on there, put a five on that guy uh, and whatever on him. It doesn't really matter because one, two, three, they're going to take out three sections of this bunker. And uh, that gives me a win. Okay, that gives me a win. Um, as I say, this first beach is slightly easier than some of the others. Um, there are some that are really quite difficult. Um, there are some with, with a, an extra fire position. Uh, so they have seven dice for the enemy. There are some where the fire positions are split and you can only attack one with these sort of three tracks over here and one with three tracks over here. So you've got to be careful about who's attacking where and where you bring reinforcements in and so on uh, which can add to the challenge say there's some with enemy um tank support but it, just the layout of the maps themselves is just more difficult now when you when you the sea is up here it's more difficult obviously on point du hoc you've got to climb a cliff which can slow you guys down um, on the little islet near uh, Guadalcanal. You have to um, get over coral, which can be more tricky, um, a bit less cover at the beginning of that one. And um, Iwo Jima, there's a mound of ash that US troops had to get over, which is uh, which is also problematic and doesn't provide any cover. So there are, you know, the different beaches bring different challenges, but there are certainly some that are much harder than this. Um, and that's probably one of the easiest victories I've ever had. You, you know, usually you're kind of down to your last couple of guys, and you're hoping you're going to sling that last grenade in the in the hole in order to to get the victory. So um, it's quite a bit going on there. So you might be able to show you one or two of the other beaches here. So yeah, there's uh, that would be um, Iwo Jima. So there you've got this sort of ash mound in the middle again you know all in full color usually you've got the ash mound in the middle where there's no real cover so the trick there is to get your guys up into this sort of tree line and then hope you get higher numbers to run over that mound and get to where you want to go so that can be problematic that's the sort of coral mound near Guadalcanal uh, what else we got point du hoc and there's a uh, trick again. You've got split bunkers. So these three are all firing at that one. These three are firing at that one. Plus you've got this cliff. It looks slightly different actually on the final version, but you're a cliff here. So these cliff spaces have slightly different rules to uh, make it more difficult for you. Uh, and so on. I won't, I won't go through them all, but um, oh yeah, just one more there. Look, you can see on that one, that's, I think that's sword. That sword. It might be Sword Beach. I think Sword Beach was particularly heavily mined. So you can see there's loads of mines on there. And, um, but fortunately they did have a, a, a one of these amphibious Shermans, so you, you do get a bit of tank support on a double two, as I say. All right, um, anyway, just wanted to pop that on just to uh, give you a bit of a heads up as to what's coming down the line. Oh, uh, the other one I'm working on at the moment is a, is a, a Battle of the Bulge type game, which is still in fairly early development, but it looks a bit like that. You can see that's more... Um, in the style that I've, of, of, of sort of earlier books. I guess in a way, is it a, not really a sequel to, but I guess it's kind of in the, in the style of Fields of Normandy. The, the enemies do move a little bit, but not much. Uh, and obviously this is, you know, it, it's based on armour, so, so tanks. 
Um, but there are quite a lot of similarity between that and uh, Fields of Normandy. So they're, they're the ones coming down the line. Okay, guys, thanks for listening. Cheers now.